we'll be dealing a lot with slope and what it means. So it kind of ext extends what you've learned with a slope before in the past. Okay, so from just from what you've learned in algebra, a slope of a line, what does that really do? It measures how... Average rate of change. Rate of change or how steep the line is, okay? Just in general, I want, to, want you to think, okay, it's how steep the line is, okay? All right, there's four possibilities, okay? You can have a slope that can be, you can have a positive slope, and just abbreviate that if you want to. You can have a negative slope. You can have zero slope, or you can have a slope that's undefined, okay? So I want to just kind of remind you of what these things are. I always feel like when I teach calculus, i got to review slope because it's such a big topic, Okay, so here's kind of the possibilities. If you have a positive slope from left to right, it's kind of like you're going uphill. Negative slope's downhill. A horizontal line is zero slope, and a vertical line is undefined slope. We'll look at mathematically why that is. Okay, everybody probably has learned this. The, the, generally, the slope is just like the rise over the run. Okay, that's just kind of a general way. It's, and basically what it's doing is it's measuring the y direction and the x direction, okay, like that, okay? So here's some of the, the formulas that you've learned in the past, is the slope is rise over a run, and I think I heard somebody say change. You can also think of the rise as how y is changing, and the run is how x is changing. If you haven't seen this delta y, delta x, that's just an abbreviation. That, that triangle, is it's a Greek letter, so it's delta, Okay, you ever watch the movie Animal House? Delta, 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 Fraternity, okay? I love that movie, that's a classic. So Delta just is telling us change of Y, change of X. And then the formula you're probably familiar with is you just subtract the Ys, just subtract the Xs, and you get that ratio, okay? So that's gonna be something that's important to deal with. The other thing that you've probably learned in the past is the equation of a line one way to get this, we call this the point-slope formula. Now, you're going to use this quite a bit. You don't have to know what the name of it is. But the point-slope formula, what it does is if you know the slope, m is the slope, okay? And then if you have a point, x, y, y, 1 is a point. So if you have those three things, if you know the slope of the line and a point on the line, then you can always find its equation. Okay, so what I tried to give you is just kind of a summary of things that you've learned in the past. Now we're going to do just a little simple, quick review here to start with. Okay, you go down to example one. Just by looking, would that have a positive slope or a negative slope? Positive. It's going uphill. Okay, let's crunch it out. There's two ways you can do this. Uh, you can just do this in your head. The rise, if you went from this point to this point, the rise would be basically going up one, okay? The run would be going over, it looks like, to the right three, okay? So basically, this would be a, a slope of one-third. You can do it that way if you want to. Now, the other way you can do this is you can use this formula. Uh, we use M for a slope. We have Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, okay? Okay? So basically, these are the y values, 5 and 4. So you can just do 5 minus 4, and then you've got to subtract the x's in the same order, 3 minus 0. Just be consistent of the order you subtract stuff, and notice if you do that, you'd have one-third anyway. So you want to be able to know how to count a slope or be able to compute it with that formula. Does that look familiar to everybody from their past? Okay, needs to be. Okay, the next one, is this the answer to this one going to be a negative or a positive slope? Negative. It's going down. From left to right, it's going down. Okay, if you wanted to go through and just do the rise over the run on this one, <coughs> then what you could do on this is that you could just count, okay, how far down do I have to go? And really, we're going from 3 to negative 3. And you don't have to count. I always see students, like, counting, which is okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But how far apart are negative 3 and 3 anyway? Aren't they just six apart? Okay. So you can do that in your head. You don't have to count. You can just say, okay, how far am I going down? So that's down six. And then the run would be like this. So that's the distance from negative three to one. See, that's a negative three on the x-axis and a one. How far apart are those two numbers? They're four apart. So you would have down six over four, right? 
Okay, so what you'd have is down we represent with a negative. So you'd say negative 6 fourths. Then, of course, you can reduce this fraction by 2, so you get negative 3 halves. So the slope of that line is negative 3 halves. All it really means is you're going down 1, 2, 3, over 2, and then you're back on the line. 1, 2, 3, down, and over like that. And that's it. You could also do the, the slope formula like this. So we have the point negative 3, 3. And we have the point 1, negative 3 like this. Okay, so you just go like this. Subtract. You do negative 3 minus 3 for the y's. And then 1 minus negative 3 for the x's. So that's negative 6 over 4. So you get the same thing. Okay, do you guys know this from your past? Okay, there's something you need to review. You'll have some of this on your homework too. Because it's important that you just remember how to do this. Okay, how about the next one? It's a vertical line. You know what that is? It's undefined. This one would be an undefined slope. And you want to write it that way. Don't write no slope. Textbooks sometimes say no slope. It's undefined. And here's the reason why. You have these two points. It looks like you have negative 1, 5, and you have negative 1, 2. So if you did the slope formula, you would just do 5 minus 2. And then you would do the y, the x's in the same order, which would be negative 1 minus negative 1 like that, right? Okay, so what's the numerator? 3. What's the denominator? 0. Okay, and that's why it's undefined, is you can't have a 0 denominator. Okay, that's the y part. What's the answer to this one? 0. Yeah, that's a 0 slope. Same thing, okay? And you can crunch out with any of those points. It wouldn't make any difference which ones you use, Okay. Let's review the equation of a line, and then we'll kind of get into what we're going to be learning and how this relates to slope. Okay, if you want to find an equation of a line, there's two ways to do it. I'm going to show you the point-slope formula. You can also do y equals mx plus b. It's your call. But I want to work with this one, because that's the one you're going to work with in calculus most of the time probably is this formula. Okay, so first of all, what you need to do is you need to find the slope. Okay, you could do the slope by the slope formula, or you could count it out. You can probably do that in your head. What does that look like? Down how much? Down to right what? Four. That's what it looks like. Okay, so it looks like if you're doing that slope, it's just down to, then it looks like you're going to the right four. Okay, that's a negative slope. So that would be just negative two over four, which reduces to negative one half, right? Okay, so that's what the slope is. Now what you can do is you can pick either point. It doesn't make any difference which point you choose. I would probably use this one because it's got a zero in it and it's easier to work with zero. So what I'm going to do is when I get this answer, I'm just going to bring down the y. That's a part of my answer. y1 is going to be the y value, zero. The slope is going to be negative one-half x, okay, like, or negative one-half, then parentheses x minus negative one. Okay, so you want to put that in like that. So again, what you're doing is you're plugging in the you're plugging in the slope and you're plugging in the point like that. Y goes there, X goes there. Does that make sense and look like something you've done before? Okay, well, let's work it out. Y minus zero is Y. This would be negative one half times X plus one, and then you could just go through and multiply it out. Okay, you could do a distributive property, so you'd have negative one half X and then negative one-half times one is negative one-half. So that would be the equation of that line, okay? Now, let's see if this makes sense to you. I tried to make this up so it makes sense to you. What's the meaning of that number right there? Okay, does that look right? Yep. Okay, yeah, and then what's the meaning of that? Slope. But we know that's right, because that's if you go down one over two, you're going to hit the next point like that. So that's the idea. And really what an equation is, and a lot of times students get in this level of a class and they don't really understand what graphs are. All graphs are is they are a picture of every solution of that equation. This equation has an infinite number of solutions. One of the solutions is negative 1, 0. Another one's negative 5, 2. But all of those dots have an x and y value, right? And if you plug them in there, you would get something that works. A graph is a picture of mathematical solutions of an equation. Okay, now what we're getting to is we're going to talk about average rate of change um, 
and what how this relates bothly uh, to business, economics, uh, even physics and things like this as we're doing this. So a rate of change. So basically we're going to look at developing this formula right here. Average rate of change, you might want to write this down, is just this. Average rate of change is a slope. Okay, that's all it is. Okay, it is represented by a slope. Okay, so the average rate of change of, of a function is the slope of what we call a secant line. You may or may not know what that is. A secant line just means you connect any two points on the function. Okay, for instance, if you had a parabola, okay, if you just picked any two points on that parabola and joined it, that's what a secant line is. Okay, and then we're going to probably a, a little bit later we'll talk about what a tangent line is. Okay, now tell me, you guys tell me, have, did you, have you seen this expression before? If you took finite pretty recently, you probably did. You remember what you call this? That doesn't matter that much. Difference quotient, good. Let's write that down because this is something that's kind of a big deal in calculus. So we call that a difference quotient. And that's the mathematical representation of an average rate of change. Okay, so I want to try to get you real comfortable with that notation and what it's saying. Uh, and you're going to need to know that in order to get the idea of in, in calculus what a derivative is. Okay, so next page, I'm going to show you what a difference quotient really is. So what I'd like you to do on this graph, let's just draw a graph that looks something kind of like that. Just to, you don't even have to put any points, just a rough graph on this. So what we're going to do on this is let's just pick any two points on this graph. Let's say like th a point there and a point there. Okay? And what we're going to do with this is when we're doing an average rate of change, what I said, an average rate of change is nothing more than a secant line. So you want to just connect those two dots into some sort of a line like that. Okay? So what we've got to do is we've got to find the slope of that line. Now, we're not going to use specific numbers. We're going to use variables. So it's going to kind of go like this then. Okay, so the idea is with this one, we're going to just kind of bring this down like this, and we're going to say that's x equals a. a is just means it's just any old number. We don't know what it is. Okay, the y value right here is going to be f of a. That just means you find the function value of a like that, okay? Now, what you do is you move this over, okay? You move this over by what we call h. h is just a number that's a positive number, it's just some number. So what that means is this point right here, and let's think about this a little bit. All you're doing here is you're moving this a over by h. So what's happening? Isn't a just getting bigger by h? How do you make a get bigger by h? How do you write that? A plus h. We make something get bigger, you add it, right? So that means this thing is going to come down, and that's going to be just a plus h, right? Okay, the function value is going to be f of whatever a plus h is, like that, okay? So see, all we're doing is we're just saying, okay, we got a point. I randomly picked that point. It has a x value of a and a function value. Then we move it over, make it bigger by h. That becomes a plus h, f of a plus h. Does that make sense? We're just we're using variables. We're not using specifics. So what this means is, this is what you want to label on here. This point right here would be a comma f of a. You need to understand that that is a point on that graph. Okay. The next point is this one. That's going to have an x value of a plus h, and the function value is going to be f of a plus h like that. Okay, those are the two points. Okay, now this kind of stuff's pretty abstract, but it's basically just representing variables so we can develop a general formula. Okay, a, f of a. A plus h, f of a plus h. Is that sensible to everybody? Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope using the slope formula. So the average rate of change is really just the slope of the line, and m is the slope of the line. So what we do is we use the slope formula. So we're going to subtract those y values. The y values are f of a plus h minus f of a. OK, 
Okay, that's what that is. Okay, it's just change in y over change of x. Okay, when we do the x values, that's going to be a plus h minus a. Does everybody see what I'm doing with that? Okay, what happens in the denominator? A's cancel out, right. So what you end up getting is you get the average rate of change is equal to this expression. And we do call that the difference quotient. And this is a real, real big deal in calculus. If you took finite math, you may have learned how to deal with a difference quotient, but you didn't really do much with it. The purpose at finite math was to prepare you for calculus because it's a big deal in calculus. Okay, so that's where that formula comes from. All right, any questions with that? Uh, mm -hmm. There it always has to be a, a plus h minus a. You don't ever put well, it doesn't there. matter which order. You just got to be consistent. It's just logical to do it this way. If, if we did like f of a minus f of a plus h, then we'd be forced to do a minus a plus h. You would get a mathematically equivalent answer. It's better to do it this way. Okay? The order doesn't really make any difference, but the consistency is what's important. Okay? Okay, so let me show you kind of what we're going to begin to do with this, at least today. Okay, now this is one that I took out of the book. This is a revenue function. So this is just saying the revenue in dollars, you're selling X planner boxes. And this right here is the revenue function, okay? Is that logical? That's a polynomial, right? Okay, it's an even degree polynomial. Is it logical to everybody that it's going downward? Okay, like that. So what we're going to do on this is we're only interested from 0 to 1,000. What we're doing with this is what is the change in revenue if the production has changed from 100 planters to 400 planters? Now, this is not an average rate of change. This is just a change. So what we would do with this is 100 planners, you would have to do the revenue at 100 planners. Now, you can get this information from the graph, but I want to remind you where this comes from. The revenue is 20x minus 0.02x squared. So we would do 20 times 100 minus 0.02 times 100 squared. Now, that's already given in the graph. That's equal to 1,800. You could crunch that out with a calculator if you wanted to. Okay, that's what that is. Then you do the 400 planners, so you would do the same thing. Uh, plug that into the revenue function. That's going to tell you how much revenue comes in from selling 400 planners. So that would be 20 times 400 uh, minus 0 0.02 times 400 squared, and that's going to be 4,800. Okay. Now, the graph already had that on there, but if the graph didn't have that, well, you obviously have to figure that out. Well, okay, well, what is the change in revenue? What did it change by? You can do that in your head. Like $3,000, right? Okay, so really all we'd have to do on this is that change and, and uh, would just be the change would be this. We would just subtract the two. So we'd just do 4,800 minus 1,800, so that would be... $3,000, okay? And this is in dollars, so you want to be sure that you put your units of dollars on there. Okay, so that's how the revenue changed, okay? And see what this is doing is it's really kind of giving you a slope. So when we do the average rate of change, the average rate of change is the slope of the line that connects those two points. We call that a secant line. So when we get to the average rate of change, then all you're going to do on this average rate of change is this. Okay, let's just kind of write it like this. What it is, is it's just basically the change in revenue, which we got, that's what Y is represented by, over the change in production. Okay, that's what X is. Okay, so it's just the slope. I'm trying to use this to kind of show you how this relates to a slope. Okay, so here's basically what you get. You're going to end up using that slope formula. So... The change in revenue comes, we already did that. That's just doing 4,800 minus 1,800. Okay, then when you do the change in production, what do you do? You just do 400 and 100 like that. So see, it's a slope formula. You don't even really have to know the F of A plus H difference quotient formula. You just got to know if I got two points, I can find a slope. So that's going to be 3,000 3, over 300 so that looks like that would be, what is that, 100? Or no, 10. 
two of those cross out, so that would be $10, okay, like that, okay? Now, what this really means is this. It's the slope of this line, but tell me what this would mean, okay? If you, uh, if, let's see, if you produced one more planter, what would happen to the revenue? If, if it changes 10, it'd go up 10, wouldn't it? All that number right there just means is every time you produce another planter, the revenue goes up by $10. Okay, like that. Because see, this is really 10 over 1. It's a rise over a run. So it's just telling me one additional planner is going to cost, is going to bring a revenue of 10 more dollars. Is that sensible? That's what that, that's what that change in revenue or the average rate is doing. Yes. Good question. So like, to that, like, from like a business perspective, like, they, you want to make, you know, your, the amount of planner that you want to make is like that optimal number at the top. Yes. Right. So, like a thousand. If you made a thousand planners, you'd make zero dollars. Right. Uh, well, when you get to what did you say again? Like if you like okay, so yeah, say okay. you're making a thousand planners, you're it's zero. Right. So you want to make that much planners at the top of that graph, which is to like maximize 600. your revenue. Right. Okay. Right. So if you're around 500, that's a a calculus problem that we'll be looking at. So you can take any graph and you can tell kind of where it hits a maximum or where it hits minimums. That's one of the things that we'll do with calculus, okay? Okay, so let's see. Let's do, um, let's do the graph on this one together. Let's go ahead and just do one more with revenue, and we'll kind of move on from there. Now, something like this, I would expect you to only do a graph like this with technology because it's number crunching. Now, first of all, you do know that that's a, a downward parabola, right? Okay, because it is an even polynomial. It's got a negative number in front, so it's going to be like that. Let's put it in and uh, kind of just do a, a, get a rough graph together. Okay, so let's put in y equals 60x and then minus 0 0.025 and then x to the second. Okay, now I'm giving you this right here. This is kind of the, the production level for the infant car seats that is logical in this problem. So let's go to our window, and let's put in 0 to 2,400. Okay, you could scale that by whatever you want to. You could do, whoops, see I got an extra 0 in there. This happens all the time on here. Got to be very careful, 2,400. Okay, let's, you could scale it by 100. You could scale it by 500. I kind of like scaling it just by 500. Okay, like that. Okay, now for the, for the Ys, again, what I always tell students to do on the Ys is, Go to your table of values just to get a sense for what that revenue is. And you're going to have to just estimate and adjust. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go second table, and it looks like that revenue is getting bigger and bigger as we would expect, but it's probably going to get way, way bigger than that. So you might want to just kind of take a number like 10,000 or something like that and just kind of estimate it. So let's try this first. Let's go... Uh, y minimum has to be zero because revenue is zero. That's the smallest revenue. There's no such thing as negative revenue. Okay, and let's try something like a big number like 10,000. Okay, and this is a guess and it may not be good enough. And I'm going to scale by 100. Okay, because this is what you'll get into. Scale by 1,000. If you put that in, you want to see that you have a parabola open and downwards. Okay, so what's going to happen, you can see it going up. It's going to now probably start coming down. That would tell me that 10,000 probably needs to go up a tad, right? So let's try 100,000 or 50,000. Let's try 50,000 or something like that. So you have to kind of play with this a little bit. So let's take that as 50,000 and then maybe scale that by, you could scale that by 10,000 if you wanted to. Okay, because you want to know how to figure that Y window out. You, technology, you got to play with that a little bit. Okay, that looks like a good picture. What do you think? Okay, so let's go ahead and draw a picture of this. And I'll leave this up here. So the way I would want you to sketch stuff on here is, first of all, be sure that you label everything kind of carefully. Okay, so we got our, our X axis, and you want to label what that is. You would say that's number of... Uh, infant car seats. And you want, don't be lazy about that. I mean, you need to, if you're presenting a graph to somebody, it needs to have information on it, right? 
Okay, then we're going all the way up to 2400. So at a minimum, you need to have that like that. Okay, you can scale it however you want to. And then this would be the revenue axis, R of X. So you just say revenue like that. Okay, and then if you get some values on here, you can trace, you know, just estimates all you got to do. Uh, let's see, we wanted this to go up to 50,000. You could even put 50K there. And you could go 10, 20, 30, 40 like that. Got to have something labeled though, okay, like that. And you could even break that up into 1,200 or whatever you want to do like that. Now, all you need to do is just trace. You have a point here. You already know this. Trace at zero, you're going to get zero. So that's one good dot right there. Okay, if you traced at 2,400, you would also get zero. So if you get like about three or four good points, that's good enough. Okay, like that. Okay, then if we traced at 1,200, that kind of appears to give the maximum. That's like about 36,000. So 10, 20, 30, just kind of in there. Then the rest of it's a good sketch there. But if I want you to give me a graph, I want to be sure that you have, you know, label your axis, tell me what they mean, number of car seats, revenue, put your scale on there, and just enough points to make it pretty accurate. That's a pretty good sketch right there. It's got all the information we need, okay? So what we're going to do with this is we're going to find the average rate of change <coughs> in revenue if the production has changed from, from this. Okay, so what we have to do actually is we got to find these two values right here. So the first thing we got to do on part B is you got to find F of 1,000. And then you also got to find F of 1050. Okay, now you can use your calculator. That's one of the benefits of these graphing calculators. You can go ahead and just trace at these values if you want to. So let's just do that because that's the fastest way to do it. So if you type trace 1,000, then that's going to give me $35,000, okay, is what that is. Then if you trace at 1050 car seats, that's going to end up giving, let's see, that's 35, what is that, 35,437.5 is what you get there, okay? So, so you can just use the trace to do that. So what, you're, what this means is, is you have two points. You have 1,000 seats brings in a revenue of 35,000 like that. 1050 seats brings in a little more revenue, 35,437.5. So if you're finding the average rate of change, what are you doing? You don't even have to worry about the difference quotient. What are you doing? Subtract. You're finding like the slope, right? Yeah, you are gonna subtract, use that slope formula. So if you're doing the average rate of change, all you need to do is just do, find the slope. So you just need to do 35,437.5 minus the 35,000. Okay, that's the change in revenue. Okay, and then you got to do the change in production, which would be 1050 minus 1,000 like that. Okay, and I'm just going to do this on a calculator. It looks like the numerator is 437.5. The denominator is 50. And then you can just divide that out, and that'll give you the average rate of change between these uh, levels of production. <clears throat> okay, so I'm getting about $8.75 is what that average rate of change is. In. Okay, and that's the idea. Okay, does that make sense what we did? Okay, so what is average rate of change? It's a slope. It's a slope of a line that connects two points on a graph. That's what it is. Now, we'll kind of look at this next time. We'll go a little further with this, and then we'll do instantaneous rate of change, and that's where calculus and the idea of a limit comes into play. So we'll kind of begin to put this all together next time. Okay?